Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I keep my blueprints clean and organized? So this is going to be a more of a free from free form video, and it's not really referring to me for the my, but you as the my. Basically, what are some tips and tricks on keeping our blueprints cleaner? Less looking like a mess of spaghetti, as it's referred to, and something more like art or something we can be proud of. So there's a few things. I've What I'm using here for my example is a game I created for January 2016 for the Unreal Game Jam. And half of this has been optimized and the other half is not. And we're going to cover a few things I did to make it cleaner and easier to work with. So the first one is going to be reroute nodes. Now these are covered in a separate video, but it's very important to use them. Here's an example. I have this event right here called spawn wave, and it has four inputs. Now I'm taking and I'm saving all of those in inputs into a variable for later use. Now if I did not have the reroute node, and those are these nodes down here, this is what it would actually look like that like that and like that let's get rid of our reroute nodes and now we have this we have nodes with wires that are crossing through other nodes i mean technically we could maybe do something like this where they're kind of stacked up like that there we go now they're stacked but i mean now you have this weird cascading thing where it's going down but by using the reroute nodes, hopefully undo will let me get them all back. Let's see what happens. There we go. We actually have all of our nodes in a nice clean execution wire. And the reroute nodes let me reorganize and put where these other wires go in this little, you know, downward fashion. And it keeps my chart flowing straight. The reroute node also lets me do things like I split off a true and false. So they're not on top of each other and I can keep them straight across as you notice and even when I use something like my branch which goes all the way back to the beginning if I was to delete my reroute node which I shouldn't have done that until I figured out where it went to let's see it went back to my original branch so let me get rid of my two reroute nodes here and then we had our false right here hooked up to the input on our branch and there you go now we have this false running directly through the middle of our entire event graph. Now let's undo that and hook it back up. And now you can see, if you look at this, you can see at an overview, we have something coming in here and it splits off and they come back together here. Their flow continues on. And then if it hits here, it goes all the way back to there. You can actually see that because of the way we have this set up with the reroute nodes. So get used to using reroute nodes, use them to organize things, keep things cleaner and flowing better. Some other examples of using reroute nodes, as you can see here, due to the reroute nodes, I actually have these nice flowing left to right graphs. Let's close that one up and close that one up. Let's see, is this another one? And here's another example. Without these reroute nodes, I would have lines just going everywhere, but now at least it looks decent. But here's something you may notice different between this one and a previous one. I have no clue what this does. If I was to go back to, let's say this later on, like technically I did today, because I haven't been here for a while. Let me close these. And what do each of these sections do? Well, I know this is my begin play. I know this does a line trace. I know this does, someone told us to do a line trace, so we handle it. This one is playing effects and sound. And this one, did we bump into something? I know that because I left a comment. These ones, Okay, um, event update kill streak. What does it actually do? I don't know. So I need to figure out what it does, and the only way I can know what it does is if I had a comment or I retry all of this stuff again so I can try to figure it out. I'm having an issue here. I had this before with one of the, it's, it's the HUD. There's an issue with a certain set of. Well, we're just going to go with it. You might see some jumping on the cursor, and that's because of the project I have set up. You know what? Let's see if we can just open that back up. Oh, wait. 
There we go. Okay, it's fixed. Yeah, it's it's a weird issue with opening up a HUD a certain way. So let's go ahead and go back to what we were doing, which is comments. Nice and commented. And I have no clue what this does. So comments, pretty simple. We can select all your appropriate nodes and hit C. It's going to add a comment box. And in this case, this one's going to be the event any damage. Now, even if you just name the name of the event here, it makes it easier to see, like for example, if I move these out of the way, exactly what this section does when you're zoomed out. You can, of course, click on it. You can add a little bit more text to it, you know. Um, handles when we take damage. And then now you notice it's a little easier. You can click on the comments and you have some things here. You can adjust the text here, or you can even change the comment color, which is pretty cool. Let's change this to something like that. You can make a little color bubble where it'll pop up for when you have it zoomed out. See how the bubble itself is colored or not colored. And then basically the type of move, whether you move everything when you move the comment box or you move only the comment. Whoops, like that. It's a small thing, but it's helpful when you're looking at your code later on or even, you know, the next day and you're trying to remember what you did. So comments, that's the next nice thing. What else do we have in there? Well, we have functions. And I believe that was why I opened up this one. Here we go. So we have functions. So I have all this and it looks nice and organized. But behind this, I actually have this monstrosity, this monstrosity, this one, which who knows what this one does. I didn't even comment it. And then this basic little thing. And you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, what the heck is that? Well, I used functions to basically take either common code or code I wanted to keep separate and I dropped them into a function. And all you have to do for the function is it drops into these little nodes here. And instead of having all of this, where did it go? Right here. So I have git line trace, then I have that giant chunk of stuff. And then I have this, oh, that's an interface. So that one doesn't count. So I have, I basically have all of this code would go right here in this little node. But since this node's a function, it's just an input and an output and it's nice and clean. I can name it appropriately, comment it, and we don't have to see all this giant mess behind it. So functions are great for condensing code or reusing code, or even just doing something simple. Like for example, on my tick, I have it spinning the blade around the character. It's a little buzzsaw and it just spins around my little character. Now it's not complex. This is all it is, adding local rotation to the blade every tick. But I mean, I could have these two nodes right here, and then I have to comment it, or I have a little node that's called spin blade, and it's nice and simple to understand. And the good part is, I could also do something like, maybe I wanted a little bit of a particle effect, or a light sheen, or a sound effect, or something to happen in addition to spinning. I don't have to Take this, move this out, add some more things in the way, reorient my code, reorient my lines. I can just edit in here, boom. Now we've keep, kept our changes separate and compact. Same thing with the one next to it, you notice bob movement, this giant monstrosity right here. One little node, and we can actually read this easier. So every tick, we're gonna spin our blade, we're gonna bob our player, we'll do a line trace, we're gonna set our crosshairs to a valid point, see if we have a target in our crosshair, tell the crosshair to tint itself, and then set no need to tint. And stuff like this, for example, like telling the crosshair to tint and things like this, no need to tint, you could even collapse those into a function or a node or a macro or something like that. Keep things nice and organized. A nice high-end overview and your functions contain all of your current work. I mean, look how nice this is right here compared to having this monstrosity and then, like I said, yeah, it's another monstrosity as it goes off. So functions, good to go. Next thing, which I did remember and then completely forgot again. Um, let's see if I can remember it again. So I had functions and I had, see, this is why you'd usually use notes. I had functions. I'm going to cover macros, but I had something else I was going to cover that I thought was really handy. And I can't remember it now. So we'll go ahead and we'll do macros next. So macros are handy when you have something that does the same thing more than once. In this case here, I have get game state, 
cast it to my specific game state, and then get the sound volume. And then I'm using that to, whenever I play a sound, to adjust the sound appropriately. So that way if you adjust the sound in the settings, it's going to go ahead and use this universal variable I have adjusting as needed, and it, it'll play the appropriate sound volume. Now this is something I use more than once. As you can see, I use it here. I use it here, which is right here, and then I use it here. So I use it in three different places. Now if we convert that into a macro, we could have one node we can call from all of those in theory. If we were to take this and convert it into a macro, and then let's call this macro like, um, you know, get sound volume. That's great. But the problem is this macro is part of this blueprint. It's not a universal macro. This is nice though. This is a nice little macro. And then we could actually technically, if we want to copy this macro over to here and over to here. But we could make it universal. We can make it a macro library. Let's go ahead and undo this. Macro libraries are good when you have small things that aren't meant to do much. Maybe get or retrieve variables, maybe even set variables if you want to. And they're meant to be reused over and over. Maybe you're getting the player character and casting it multiple times. Maybe you're not using blueprint interfaces and you're doing the same re repetition like here. Well, let's condense this into a blueprint macro. From here, we'll go to blueprints and we'll go to macro library. Now macro libraries are covered in another video, but basically it needs to be able to be accessed by whatever its parent class is. Since I have a character, I have an enemy character, which is a sub of a character, and then I have a spawn manager, which is an actor. I'm just gonna make it an actor. I'm gonna call this one, you know, awesome. I shouldn't call that, let's call, let's call it Zila. Oh, this is a macro library, macro library. There we go, we'll call it Zila macro library. Name of the game is Zila. So we open it up, we have an input and output. We'll move this over here. Let's find this, because this is what we want to do. We're gonna go ahead and copy that and slap it into our macro library here. We have no input, but we do have an output. Well, this should be pretty simple. Output of, um, this is gonna be our volume. Obviously it's an integer. Oh, no, it's a float, not an integer. And we'll do this and we'll save it. And we'll name this get sound volume. And now we have a macro I can call from any actor called get sound volume that's gonna get my game state cast it, and get my sound volume variable. Well, let's clean this up just because, why not? Close this down. Now I, what I can do is I can delete this. I can do get game volume, which is probably the sound volume. Yeah, we'll get sound volume. Hook it up, put it there. Let's copy this so it's quicker. Delete, paste, hook up, reorganize, copy, delete, paste, we are nice. And there we go. So if this was something as of, obviously I read, I did this by hand as I was doing this game, but if I had the time, or for example, if I was expanding on this or it's a full fledged game, this is just a game jam game in a couple of days, couple done in a couple of days, getting sound volume is great as a macro and a macro library. Cause I can use this anywhere inside of my program on any actor, which is pretty much every blueprint you can make. And I have one little node that's nice. And all of this space that I was wasting, I can do right there. Ah, there we go. I remember the other one. Okay. See, I knew I'd remember it. Something added f recently is the ability to line up nodes. So if I was to select this node and this node, and I right-clicked and I chose alignment, we now have some alignment nodes. We can align the tops of them, the middles, bottoms, left, centers, rights, or straight and connection. This one is awesome. Straight and connection. Boom, straightens the connection. Now you notice we have an issue here where, you know, it obviously isn't the same as the other ones. Well, you know what? We go back out a little bit. We'll select all of our primary nodes here. Right click, alignment, straighten connections, boom. Now we have, in theory, a straight connection all the way across. And of course it didn't work out how I wanted it. Well, this is one of those new features that they're working on. Maybe let's try this, straighten. I see that's getting a little better. That one looks straight. That one, who knows if that's straight. But it looks like it's basically straightening left to right. Oh, well, oh, that's close enough, probably, right? Yeah, whatever. That's close enough. There you go. So it looks a lot better than it was before. Or, of course, you know, if you wanted to, you could have always selected them like that. Alignment, align top. And now it's going to make the tops of all of our nodes 
straight across, which of course is going to play havoc on our lines themselves, because every node, of course, this one's got two lines, this one's got one line, this one's got one line, and it just plays havoc. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Let's try alignment straighten again, and there's there's a really weird, really, I think it happens when you can't see everything, I don't really know. Let's undo it a bunch of times. There we go, now we're back to straight. That was the other thing I forgot and I remembered. So you have on any of the nodes is the alignment. This is something they added, I want to say, one version ago at this point, maybe in 4.10. So it's something that's really handy if you're trying to clean things up. With that, we have covered how to keep your blueprints organized. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.